back to Nerd Girl Nation. We're here with user experience expert Deepika Singh. Deepika, welcome. Thank you. We're so excited to have you. Did you move to America when you were 11? Something like that. Something 13. like that? Yeah. And you didn't really know the language, but you did know math. Is I knew correct? math, yes. <laughs> is that the same sort of language for, for data that no matter who you are, How interesting. it's the same thing? That's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's universal, I guess, because yeah. numbers are universal. Not having that expression of language in a new country, um, you know, we, it was easy to get into science and like science projects. You didn't need language for that. It was just a different way of communicating. So numbers are sort of comforting in a way. Yeah. 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 At what point in your life you said, I want to do cognitive science? I actually was a pre-med. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I, I was fascinated by the brain, you know, and I went into a hospital as part of my pre-med for a year. I sort of, you know, volunteered in the ICU. And I realized, oh, this is not going to work. It's not my space. And so I dropped that, but I still kept cognitive sciences, mm -hmm. my study. I had no idea what I was going to apply. I, I just loved it. I was studying mm -hmm. it because I loved it. At the, in the last year, we had a speaker come in uh, who was talking about how he's applying it. And for the first time, I heard the word usability. And he was talking about how he was making uh, websites and applications more usable. And I thought, oh, amazing, really? That's fantastic. It just, it just, it was a switch that turned on. I said, this is what I want to do, usability. For the next five years, none of my friends or family mm -hmm. <laughs> were able to explain mm -hmm. what I did. You should be a comedian then. We have the same problem. <laughs> I think that's, that's the beauty of a lot of these fields is there's no predefined path or a role. Or, but you make your own. But you make, you make your, own. your own. So I didn't have a role model, but I had a lot of encouragement mm -hmm. around me to say, go for it. You're good at it. You like mm -hmm. it. It fits well. Something is going to come. Can you define what is exactly is cognitive science? So cog sci, um, it's, it's three fields, mm -hmm. psychology, neuroscience, and computer science. Mm -hmm. And it's really about understanding cognition. How does our brain process information? How is it absorbing, processing, reacting to it? So there's a psychology to technology. You got it. And right. Just to set the context, not everybody in user experience is from cog sci background. User experience is fairly new field. Do you know what user experience is, Louie? Yes. <laughs> it's when you're a user and you need only the best experience. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This shirt is tight. It's cutting off the circulation of my brain. Deepika, can you please tell us what it is that you do? <laughs> sure. So okay. this is how I explain UX to anybody aspiring to be in the field. It's not about creating solutions. It's about creating that solutions that work for the people that you're trying to solve a problem for. And designing technology that makes sense for humans. Does anything make sense for humans? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I use technology all the time and he sees me getting frustrated with it. Hey, do you mind if we see some people trying to use, <laughs> use sure, what, sure. what happens when people like my mum get hold of an Apple product? <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. We started figuring out technology. Yeah. We can do a lot of things, we can build a lot of things, and we started building things. And we were inundated with so much technology. And then we matured and we said, wait a minute, this is, this is, this is just not easy to use, we can't figure it out, you know? And our expectations increased. So and then it became about technology that made sense. Technology that stayed was technology that was easy to use, that was fun, that was engaging. Basically like the shift of Apple where they're like, we've got the greatest mm. technology but no one can use it, so let's make it super advanced. But idiots like me can use it because the buttons are big and I know You pictures. got it. <laughs> you totally, you absolutely nailed it. Great. Apple, the reason Apple is what it is, is because of great user experience. Right. Easy to adopt, easy to understand. It doesn't make you feel dumb, like you gotta be an engineer to use their products. Grandma can use it, and my grandchild can use it. <laughs> it's easy to try and figure out FaceTime. I get to see my mom this close from the screen. <laughs> Someone told me that you can make data sound sexy. Data is sexy, what do you mean sound sexy? <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Data is, uh, is the new hottest thing. We're just flirting with it right now. It's really new, and we're figuring out how to best use it. It's reshaping technology and defining the future of, of where and how technology can interface and be a part of our lives. What is data? Because all I know about data is my phone runs out every oh, month that and data. it costs me an extra 20 bucks. Okay, let me reshape data. Are you an Amazon user? No. Netflix? Yeah. Okay. 
So Netflix, uh, when you go on Netflix, what you see as far as suggestions and movies that are, you know, shows that are recommended to you are very different from, you know, what you might see or what I might see. That is using data to really intelligently anticipate what you're going to enjoy versus oh. what you're going to enjoy. So it's, it's, it's catering the experience of browsing Netflix and using Netflix for you. And again, looking at the so, cognitive oh, science piece, right. looking at what people are using it for to predict their behavior in the future. There are incredible applications of of data mm -hmm. that just haven't come up yet. Mm -hmm. But then it's also getting into a creepy place. Like we're being watched. Right, never before in history have we had so much about us available, accessible. How much time we spent, what do we do, where do we shop, you know, what are we using, everything is, is, is somewhere in data form. And who has authority to dictate how to use that data. So there's a lot of a lot of concern around privacy, you know. Right, because mm -hmm. there's so, a difference between data and being monitored, I would think. Right. Right. So, you know, that's that's another facet of, of experience and how we interface with technology that's that's evolving right now. And we'll get there, we'll get better. You know, we'll get better at data and how to use it and how to shape experiences. As a global society, we're gonna need to solve for this collectively. Young people that wanna get into this, what kind of advice would you have? It's fairly easy. Now it's so accessible. You can start coding on your own in your own house. You don't need to go to college. You can start messing around and creating UIs and apps on your mm -hmm. own. You don't need a, a college to give you permission to do that. So they shouldn't go to college. I mean... <laughs> exactly. That's what I've been saying this entire series. Drop out of school, start a band. Start a band. Start. A... <laughs> I think it's going to be drop out of school and start a startup. There you go. I am a proponent of that to mm -hmm. some degree because my career shaped that way. It wasn't mm -hmm. through education, it was through experience. Mm -hmm. You know, go out and do it and you learn as you're doing it and you carve your niche based on what you do and you're good at what you're not. You find your place. Deepika, we want to thank you very much for being on today's show. You've been an awesome guest. We hope that you've had a great user experience. Girl, you came in and you met every expectation. You're teaching me Java. You're teaching me Java. You opened up my eyes to all these innovations. It's hotter than lava. It's hotter than lava, oh girl. You said, see you later. Were you flirting with me? Or just flirting with some data? Cause the user experience is crafted by you. Your interface is beautiful and functional too. Oh, you make technology exciting.